I know you probably said the story before, but for our viewers, how did you get into fighting? I got into fighting when I was 15. Um, my dad was a wrestler, and when we moved to Reno, he convinced me to try a class at Ken Shamrock's gym. My dad, being a huge fan of MMA, wanted to meet Ken, of course. So went there, tried a class, and instantly just fell in love with it. Were you ever, you know, like afraid as far as the sparring, all that stuff, or you were just like, I want to get in there and start fighting? You know, of course you get nervous. Um, I had never been in the street fights or fight at my, fights at my gym, so of course you get nervous. I'm gonna go in and punch somebody, but it what felt amazing. <laughs> And you're now up at Alpha, uh, Team Alpha Male, uh, the only female there, I believe. I am. Fighting pro, right? Yes, I'm the only pro, uh, I'm the only female on Team Alpha Male. And, and how's that going? You know, Uriah was just doing uh, the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, was he able to help out, or were you in good hands with Sabrina? Yeah. Yeah, you know, he um, he put me in great hands. He made sure I was 100% situated and prepared for this fight before he left for the Ultimate Fighter. And I did most of my, my last camp with Martin Campman, and this fight I did with Martin Campman. I haven't l had a lot of um, common factors in any fight. I, I, there, every fight has been different for me. There's been a lot of change, so I'm, I'm used to things changing, and you just kind of um, adjust. How's it been for you, this whole process, the, the UFC's kind of embraced you and really been putting you out in, in pretty much any promotional thing they can do. Has this kind of been a new process for you and how have you embraced it? Um, it has been new, but um, you know, I was a dancer and I wanted to be a model when I was a kid and an actress. So I'm used to being in front of cameras, it makes me really comfortable. Um, I always wanted to achieve great things, so this, this is a, just a small step towards that. And you kind of touch on it, I'd love to get you to talk about it again. You know, as they're kind of pushing you up, you know, everybody is already talking about, oh, I can't wait to see her for a championship fight. Here you are, number eight, but you're fighting an unranked opponent. A lot of people say it's a step down from the past competition. What would you say to address that? I think the people who see this as a step down don't know a lot about women's MMA or the strawweight division. They don't realize how new of a division this is. And of course, you have rankings because you have to. And the rankings are not accurate whatsoever. And I don't think we'll see an accurate ranking system for another two years. A few at the top, I do continue, I see them kind of to continue to stay at the top. But as for the maybe two or three, I, I, I don't see these rankings accurate whatsoever. So when you look at uh, Alex as an opponent, where do you see the, her major dangers and things that you really need to watch out, uh, watch out for? You know, I, I'm not going to underestimate her in any area, but I do know her strengths are in jiu-jitsu, and she has a background in karate and a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. So, of course, I anticipate her being strong in those areas, but I know she's probably improved since her last fight, and so have I. And, and for your division, how do you feel uh, Joanna? Is she, what do you feel about Joanna? Is she a good representative for uh, being a champion? Of course, you know, you get questions asked about anyone in your division. They're obviously all potential opponents, so you feel a certain way about them because they are a potential opponent. But as far as being champion of our division, I think she's a great representation to the strawweights. Um, obviously, the UFC is looking for the next round of rounds, and I think they're looking more towards the strawweights for that heir apparent. You're in the mix, you're, you know, you're, your name comes up. Um, is that a pressure for you to try to follow in the footsteps of, of an icon? And also, what's different about you than, well, like, what's different of, of you than Ronda Rousey? Um, yeah, I, I, I think if you just watch my, our fights, watch our appearance, watch us in media, watch everything about me and her, we're completely different. Uh, we're different people, and that's, that's good. I mean, she's... Um, but amazing and of course I want to follow in her footsteps I want to have those same opportunities that she's been given but I'm going to do it on my own time and my own path. Are you a striker or a grappler? A little bit of both. <laughs> and you mentioned at lunch you have an opportunity to become the youngest uh, champion in UFC history. Uh, you're, using, you're 21 now, you have two years. So is there a timeline of uh, when you'd like to do that? No, there's no timeline for that. The only thing I'm focused on is beating Alex Chambers. Are there any other fights in the strawweight division that you personally would like to fight? They did announce that Watterson uh, and Tisha Torres. I'm sure that's one you'd like to get back to. Is that a fight that makes sense maybe for next year? Uh, of course. You know, uh, every fighter in my division is a potential opponent, and I'm going to face Alex Chambers, beater, and then look for my next opponent. Is Tisha Torres a name that you would like to get in there with? Of course, you know, she's my one loss. That's just definitely something I would like to avenge, and um, we'll see if the UFC makes that match up. What's the difference between you now and you when you had the fight with uh, with Tisha? Like, how have you grown as a fighter? Um, yeah, that was my third fight ever in my entire life. <laughs> um, I was 18 years old. 
So obviously a lot has changed. I've been a, I'm at a real camp. But I train with real fighters. I don't train with um, a bunch of people who just go in there and spar. Um, I'm at a camp with real fighters and absolutely everything has changed around me. I actually know what I'm doing now instead of just going in the cage and I'm winging a prayer. <laughs> And I guess last thing, um, you, you, you're one of these happy fighters, and what I mean is that you don't go in there angry, you go in there kind of like, you know, enjoying it. Uh, how is that an advantage when you're fighting somebody that fights on emotion? Um, I don't know if that's an advantage. I mean, some people feed off of their emotions, but for me, I'm just a happy person, and being in the cage is a blessing for me. And the fact that I'm able to do this is a blessing, so I just go in there happy because I enjoy every second of it. Can you offer any predictions for the, the rest of the card, like between Demetrius and John? No predictions whatsoever. I plan I'm going to win my fight and then go celebrate with my family. Are, are there any other fights on the card that you're looking forward to maybe watching from uh, you know, backstage? Yeah, of course. You know, there's a lot of really good fights on this card, and especially if you're an <laughs> MMA fan, you a real MMA fan, you're going to love this card. And um, obviously, the title fight that's going to be a big one. Getting back to Alex Chambers. Common opponent with uh, Cameron Curran. Is there anything you take away from that fight? Are you able to kind of game plan how she did against Cameron and yeah. how you did? Of course, I look at her. We both have a common opponent. We both finished our opponent in the same round. So I definitely take that into account, and I looked at that fight, and I realized Alex is very tough, and she does not give up. So that's something that I definitely look towards. I know, I know that now. Do you think you'll be able to finish her? Yes. <laughs> And so today you were doing media appearances earlier today, right? And then and now you're heading over to Fox. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, you're probably enjoying all that uh, the media attention and stuff. Is it is it um, are you like calm or do you get nervous about all that? Um, I definitely don't get nervous with the media attention and stuff. I mean, uh, right now I'm just being in gym training, so there is certain com certain changes I have to accommodate to. Um, I had to train yesterday instead of doing a morning practice this morning because I've been with media. So um, you just adjust training schedules, but other than that, it's just part of what I do. Yeah. Some fighters consider it a distraction when they better not have, but for you, you know, No, it's not a distraction for me, and it really gets me, um, I mean, I get to talk about my opponent, I get to talk about that fight, so I get to play the fight over and over again in my head, just speaking with you, and I get to look at other things that I didn't really necessarily think about until now, so I, I think it gets me ready for the fight. And when you played over your head, how, how do you see the finish? I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs>